What is up lads, how's it going, how are you getting on, and welcome back to the channel. We've had an eventful game in 26, with non wildcarders getting the upper hand with the ride at Anfield on Sunday. If you did wildcard, all I can say is stick to the plan, and it should definitely be amongst the points this week. If you're watching this video, please give it a like, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're currently on the road to 3k subs. In this video, we'll be looking at my Gaming 26 review, along with my Gaming 27 team selection. We've lost to the Scots with double game weeks for Brighton, Brentford, Palace and Southampton, so let's get into the video. After his last three games with no clean sheet, thankfully Kepa was able to keep out Leeds for a decent start to the wildcard. I opted for the keeper double up of Kepa and Rea, and thankfully it was the right decision to start Kepa as Rea conceded two to Fulham. Rea will make his way back into my team for Brentford's double game week this week, and then I'll be able to bench boost in 29 with two double game week keepers. The Arsenal clean sheet didn't last long, with Billing wiping out my Zinchenko clean sheet in the first 11 seconds. It wasn't much better, as my 50-50 decision between Pinnock and Henry didn't pay off, as Pinnock ended up scoring for Brentford. Thankfully, Estepinian was a saviour in the fence, as he picked up a clean sheet against West Ham for a welcome 6 points return. I'll be hoping he can seek some attacking returns over the double game week. After many hours of deliberation between Martinelli and Odegaard, it didn't matter in the end, as both of them along at my Saka captain blanked, even though Arsenal managed to score three. The less said about the United game, the better to be honest, so Rashford's two points wasn't much to write home about. The saviour of the week was definitely Matoma, as he managed a goal and assist for a 13-point haul, which was well needed. A lot of managers ended up benching Matoma this week in place of March, but he was definitely always going to be a cert in my team. With Saka blanking, going against Haaland could have hurt me, but the big Norwegian only managed 4 points against Newcastle, so I didn't lose much sleep over it. Kane decided to stop returning once I brought him into my team, so it was all left down to Tony in the hopes of return on Monday night, and thankfully he scored from his spot for an 8 point return. All of these returns led to me scoring 49 points for the week, and I'm now sitting at 299k overall. It was a pretty disappointing wildcard, having transferred out Salah and Nunes for their hauls, but nobody could have predicted that 7-0 scoreline. I'm content with the green arrow at least, and hopefully I'll be seeing another one in game me 27. With the wildcard used in game week 26, I've set my team up well for game week 27, so I can afford to save the transfer this week. I've got 6 doublers in Rhea, Henry, Tony, Estepinian, Matoma and March, so I'm well set up for the double game week fixtures. Saving the transfer this week will be massive for game week 28, so let's have a look what my potential moves will be for the blank game week. With City blanking in game week 28, and facing Liverpool in game week 29, I think the smart move to try and attack the double game week fixtures in 29, and by transferring out Haaland, I'll be able to get an additional two fixtures. Ollie Watkins has been in fine form of late, and with a fixture against Bournemouth in game week 28, along with a double game week in 29, he could be my Haaland replacement. I'll be looking to bring Haaland back in game week 30, when City face Southampton. Watkins has impressed only one blank in his last six fixtures, so if he continues his form in game week 27, he could well be making his way into my game week 28 team. By planning to use only one free transfer in game week 28, I'll be able to have two free transfers in game week 29 to attack the double game week. I'll more than likely be moving Martinelli and Zinchenko on, as they only have one fixture in game week 29, and the fixtures take a turn after the double game week. Shaw looks set to be my replacement for Zinchenko, with United facing Newcastle and Brentford over the double game week. Bruno Fernandes could also make his way into the team for Martinelli with these fixtures, but Leicester certainly have the best double game week fixtures, facing Palace and Villa over the double. Madison looked lively against Southampton at the weekend, so I'll be keeping a close eye on him over the next few game weeks. Depending how Liverpool are looking, Salah could also make his way into the team, but I'll also need to make sure I've cash in the bank to be able to afford Haaland in game week 30 and bring him back into the team. All going well, I should have 13 double game week players and two single game week players for a bench boost in game week 29. Looking ahead to this weekend's deadline, FPL Salah has provided us with the clean sheet odds for game week 27. It's good viewing as a double Brentford defence and S opinion owner, as Brentford and Brighton both rank in the top two for a chance at the clean sheet over the double. Hopefully it would be a clean sweep of clean sheets in my defence, with Newcastle ranking in the top 6 for a clean sheet, so I'll be hoping Trippier can get back amongst the returns. Looking at the any time goal scorer odds, Tony tops the charts with the two fixtures. Surprisingly, the Irishman Evan Ferguson also tops the charts with Tony, but am I expecting the goals to be shared amongst the Brighton attackers over the two fixtures. Looking ahead to the weekend's deadline, I'm fairly well set up with six doublers for the double game week. My lineup is as follows. Ray and Golds, Henry, Trippier and Estepinian in defence, Matoma, March, Rashford and Saka in midfield and Tony, Kane and Haaland up top. Looking at captaincy, it's a toss up between Tony and Matoma for the armband this week. At the time of this recording, I'm currently leaning towards Matoma after Brighton looked great at the weekend. Tony does have penalty duties which may sway managers over to him, but if Matoma scores once over the double, he'll be on for a double digit haul after bonus. I have a lot to think about before the deadline, but I'm currently leaning towards a Japanese player for now. It's a fairly boring plan for this weekend's deadline, but saving the transfer will be very important for the weeks ahead. If you've made it to the end of the video, please give it a like, 
drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There you have it, there's my Game Me 27 team. Best of luck for Game Me 27, I'll see you in the next video.